Welcome back for another episode of Board Meeting. I'm Evan. And I'm Robert. In this episode, we're going to talk a little bit about um, training for the Molokai race. And, uh, you know, what, what I've been doing to get ready for the Molokai race this year. And I'm just asking questions, more or less. <laughs> <laughs> so equipment-wise, what things do you bring besides your board and your paddle? Do you bring extra fins? Do you bring a patch kit of some sort? Are you wearing a leash? Is it mandatory to wear a leash? What, you know, mm -hmm. what things do you need equipment-wise? Definitely a leash. I mean, you know, if you're doing it as a team, sometimes you you skip a leash even though it's required just because it's easier to switch. But if you're doing it solo, you definitely want to have a leash. You bring like uh, several water bags, at least two bags, you know, like camel bag type of bags with water. You it's only good. have two 40 ounce bags of water. That's uh, it? Two or three. Yeah, oh, probably three. Man. Probably going to be using three. Mm -hmm. But usually have two and then have the boat refill one of them with water, the first one. And then uh, nutrition is super important. You don't want to drink and eat too much, you know, because you can get bloated. So that's a lot of times a mistake that beginners make is they, you know, that they eat and drink too much. And so what kind of food are you eating, though? Are you just eating bars or gels or stuff? Or are you actually eating, like, spam wasabi or something? Not much, no. Um, like, poi is actually... Uh, poi is good. You know, it goes on easy and gives you um, carbs without a lot of sugar. Um, you know, I like the shot blocks. Mm -hmm. um, so poi, for, for those of you who don't know what it is, <laughs> it's taro that's grown here in Hawaii, and then you mash it up. You cook it, you steam it, it comes soft like a sweet potato, you mash it up. And then, add, and then mix it with water becomes a paste kind of, it's like a yeah. Hawaiian energy food. Yeah, it has a lot of, you know, starches, so a lot of carbs digest easily and mm -hmm. doesn't have sugar. Like a lot of times the, the gels have like a lot of sugar, which kind of gives you that sugar high, but then it, like the, you know, then your sugar drops and you, and you feel like, you know, you get the wall from that, you know. So I like to not take too much sugar. Um, I don't know, just from experience, salt pills for cramping can help. Um, Guys were taking, like, drinking, like, a baking soda drink or something to, like, lower their lactic acid, or they were, that's mm -hmm. what they were telling me. You ever tried that, or? I haven't really tried baking soda. Um, vinegar is something, too, that you can, like, if you start cramping, you can take some vinegar. There's, like, different mixes of vinegar that kind of makes the cramp go away. I don't know, I'm sure why, but it seems to work for me. So you actually do that vinegar? You drink I've vinegar. done that, yeah. Oh, is that apple cider vinegar or white vinegar? Uh, apple cider. I got, actually got, like, some kind of mix, um, but it's based, based on apple cider vinegar. Oh, it was a specific apple. cramping vinegar mix. Right. Oh. I don't even know, but it's basically just, yeah, it's basically vinegar. So, I mean, if you have apple cider vinegar... And you take a little swig of that. Um, you just have to be careful because you can kind of choke on it too, you know, so you're mm -hmm. out of breath and stuff. So, but that seems to help. But I mean, yeah, the last time I did it solo, I, I was cramping really bad and it wasn't really fun. So, so how you do with that? What do you do? Um, you just have to move real carefully so you don't you don't trigger the cramping. What cramped your legs or what? Uh, well, it's um, like the forearms. I mean, everywhere. Like yeah, my legs, my. Um, my triceps, my abs, my um, lats. Did you have compression, like over. compression gear on too, or no? I didn't. So I might, I might wear a compression shirt to see if that helps this year. And you wear compression pants? You're gonna wear the pants? Um, I might. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. The thing is about that. Then I also start overheating when I wear long, long uh, pants and long shirt. Mm -hmm. So I like to kind of let my skin breathe, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if that's gonna give me an advantage. But you know, if it helps against cramping, that's probably worth it. You know? You just tell the boat to spray I, you with water. I haven't okay. been training with um, with compression gear, so uh, it's funny because I can in training I don't really cramp, but I guess I don't push myself as hard when I'm racing them. So I'm, this year I'm going to be really um, try to really keep um, pace myself, not to go out too hard in the beginning, because that's always what I do. I just kind of try to. <laughs> be in the front in the beginning and then I can't just can't keep that pace up. But you know, it's, it's not kind of how it is with races because I remember, you know, I haven't raced in a while but w when I used to race a lot before, I didn't win anything but I'm racing, you know, but it's like, I tell myself, okay, I'm just going to pace myself, I'm going to cruise, I don't care what everybody else is doing, that's what I tell myself before the race and then no matter what, it's always somebody like right here behind me that it's like, dude, pass me or like fall back, come on. And or the person that's just in front of you, and then it's like, oh, I gotta try harder you and harder. And all of a sudden, I'm totally fatigued, and I'm totally off my game. But yeah, you, you get caught up in it, so it's tough not not to overdo it, you know. Mm -hmm. Actually, so <laughs> yeah, um, 
I'm, you know, I'm going to wear a heart rate monitor. I'm going to kind of try to monitor my heart rate, and that kind of might help, you know, to keep it below a certain threshold, you know. Wait, so how are you determining your course? Does the, the captain determine your course, or somehow you determine your course, or... How are you doing that? That's a good question, and I think that's one of the kind of one of the things I've been doing that really has been helping me. I have like a little Garmin. Uh, I forgot it's like a Pathfinder or something like a really old GPS, but you can set a pointer function on it. Mm -hmm. So when at the at the finish in Hawaii Kai, and we do this at our boot camp too on the Friday before the race, we have a Jeff Jeff Chang and I do a boot camp for new um, Molokai racers, and so we get everyone at the finish line. We set our GPS watches. I mean, every watch has a pointer function, but um every GPS watch. So you can set the waypoint at the finish and then on Molokai a lot of times at the start you can't see the island and your boat doesn't catch up to you for about half an hour, you know. So a lot of times when the race starts everyone like takes off in a certain direction and they follow the leaders, right? So mm -hmm. if the leaders are going the wrong way, like sometimes too far south, sometimes too far north, everyone follows them. And if you have, like I, I put that GPS on my board with a pointer and it points me straight towards the finish line, which is the line you want to take, it brings you right to Hanama Bay, uh, you know, Hanama Bay entrance. Um, then you're, you're on the right track, and then everybody else, like once they're both, and they tell them, oh, you're too far north, you're too far south. So how do you do so, that then? Because remember, like, I think it was two years ago, when um, all the cameras and everything, they had helicopters on Kai Lenny and Connor Baxter, because they're back and forth. And then Scott Gamble and Travis Grant went, like, way north. And they were like 20 minutes ahead of everybody. Yeah, and actually they weren't way north. I mean, I talked to Travis about it. He took pretty much took the run line straight across. You know? mm. It was just that Connor and Kai, they started out going too far south. And then I guess like, you know, Dave Guamo was on the boat and, you know, just telling them to keep, keep the high, the speedy line, you know. Going south is definitely faster, especially in the, in the channel, you know. But then once you get close to Oahu, it, you, you kind of get killed if you're too far south. Because you got to fight back upwind? Yeah, and then you, yeah, you just don't. Then yeah, you're struggling. So what you want to do is get the get the wall, you know, like close to you know, the base. So. What's the difference in the way that you're gonna approach the race if there's no wind, where if there is wind, you're gonna switch your board out at the last minute or not even? Or, I mean, what do you do? Like, like there's sometimes it's blazing wind, it's great, and then there's sometimes it's like dead. Right. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean. You have to use the same board for this whole race, you know, otherwise you could use like kind of a, a faster light, kind of light wind board in, in the beginning in the channel and then use a more stable kind of... Um, what if the board broke? Something broke on it? <laughs> then you can switch yeah. out in the middle or you oh, can't? Yeah. Equipment failure, you're allowed to switch oh. that board. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I mean, it's good to have a backup board. Usually you have one board that you use, I mean, unless you have, if the wind totally dies or something like that, then I might... You know, the week before, I consider taking a, like a flat water race board, you know, mm -hmm. or like a spray compound instead of a flat water board, but, um, yeah. Because I remember, like, I remember I went to that Olukai race the first time in Maui, and I was super excited because it's like the Maliko Gulch, right? And that's just before the F-16 version 2 came out, so Mark, Mark Rappos was like, dude, I got an F-16 version 2, I'm like, oh man, I'm going to be the first guy to use this thing, it's going to be awesome, and that thing has that super flipped up nose, that kind of like elf shoe nose, but there was no wind on that day. So the thing was, just, it, you know, it's made for high winds, whereas in flat water, it's like, you're killing me. So it's like, I mean, that was just painful, but if it was high winds, it would have been like a sleigh ride, like unbelievable awesome. So, I mean, how many people do actually take two boards and then decide at the beginning of the race which one they're going to use. Do people do that or um, nah? Mm -hmm. they just I mean, people one. take board, an extra board for backup, but I mean, it's usually like a, a lot of times you have to pay like a hundred bucks to ship your board over. So, I mean, I, I, every time I went, I only took one board, you know? So, um, yeah. So, so you better hope you, that thing doesn't get, get you, damaged you or dinged on in the process, You get a pretty right? good wind forecast like a week in advance, you know? So you're going to know if, if it's going to be dead, you're going to know probably, you know? I mean, but usually, don't you got to ship your board like a week more than so it can get there and all that? Or, it depends. No? Sometimes the boat captain, your um, oh. escort captain can take it for mm -hmm. you. Or, you know, or there's usually another escort board that has a rack that can take a bunch of boards at once, you know. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, regardless, you usually have to pay extra for for board uh, to take boards, you know. Uh, there's also a shuttle service, um, different ways to get it over there, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but, um, yeah, I mean... 
so far, every time I've done it, it's been, there's been trade winds. I mean, it's in July, middle of the summer, so there's usually um, pretty consistent trade winds. Mm -hmm. It's very rare that we get it um, like a... Hopefully you didn't get the hurricane, right? Because remember that one year, it was like almost had the hurricane. Right. It was like really close, but they yeah. still did it. Hurricane. And I mean, the tides are super important too. Some years, I mean, the, the times will vary quite a bit depending mm -hmm. on the currents and the tides, you know, so that's... That can play so where does somebody well. learn all this kind of stuff from? Because, I mean, just mm -hmm. even on the Hawaii Kai run, the difference between, you know, the t a rising tide and, a, and a, the tide that's going out and the way that the swells are coming, it makes such a huge difference, like where right. you actually go and what you can do and what you can ride. It's, uh, I mean, it takes a lot of experience. I mean, usually the guys that win the race are, have done it a bunch of times, you know, and they know exactly what's going on and what to expect. So. It, it's actually surprising that Travis Grant last year won it the first time he's ever done it on a stand-up paddleboard, although he has done it on OC1s and so on. I mean, did and you stuff. see Travis's board? I, I tried, I don't think I can even, not that I'm great, and obviously I'm not, but I can't even almost sit on that thing. It's so narrow and tippy to me, but he stands up and goes on, and the thing is fast. Yeah, and he has, he's fast, he and he's depth, light, yeah. but my, I was looking, I'm like, I'm gonna, I'll sink that thing if I sit yeah, on it. and he has the, the rolled bottoms too, so yeah. almost nobody can ride those boards. Pretty much, really. yeah. I mean, um, yeah, it takes takes really good balance, and also, you know, that confidence to, you know, be able to rock the board and, and then get it back straightened up again, you know, without falling in. I mean, that's, yeah, it's, um, you know, a lot of, I know some people that bought those those boards because of Travis and thinking, you know, if Travis is fast, I'm going to be fast on it too. And it does not yeah. always translate that way. I mean, enough. the best board is the me. one that you're standing on. Yeah. Not swimming in the water next I, to. That's what I always tell people, like for the Molokai race, it's like the number one priority is being comfortable on the board. You know, if, if you're always tippy and balancing, you're never going <laughs> to, I mean, it's not going to, you're not going to finish in a good time. If you're, if you're comfortable, even with the board, it's not the fastest board you're still going to get there in, in a good amount of time if you're not always falling in, you know. Mm -hmm. Even just falling in a few times is going to cost you more time than that little bit of extra speed. Plus, you're going to get tired. Narrow, narrow board. Yeah. You fall down like eight, eight or ten times. It's like not only tired. the amount that you miss and the momentum you lost, but you're like tired. Yeah, and your legs start getting yeah. out. And it's just like, yeah, using a really narrow board or really fast board um, rolled bottom, unless you're super good, like Travis, I would not recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> For the average guy, you know. So. Our show is pretty much conversation style, so join us in our conversation. And you can always comment below. Leave a thumbs up. If you want a thumbs down, please don't do it. Just thumbs up. Lots of thumbs ups, please. <laughs> and um, please subscribe so you can be tuned in every time we launch something new. All right. Thanks for watching the board meeting. Aloha. Thank you. Thank you. Aloha. Mahalo.